uh, whether there's time enough. Oh. Okay, so let me uh, go on with this, and maybe I come later to the explaining the Petrina. Okay, so the basic questions are, in fact, these ones here. Is this non-empty? Is it connected? Etc. Right? What are the singularities? Etc. In the same, same Brennan to look at both sides, right? And for this, it's uh, convenient to uh, use what is called Brennan-Hertel geography. What is this? So let's first explain this for rank one or line bundles. You take the blackboard here, and uh, this is the line of degrees, and this is the line of h0, so k. Okay. Then one has several lines here. I mean here, I'm imagining you have g minus 1, here we have 2g minus 2, and here we have maybe g 1, g minus 1, and here we have g. Then the Brunner line, mean, uh, sorry, let's start with the riemann roch line. This means uh, the, the right-hand side is 0. This is the line goes from g minus 1 to here g minus 1, so like this. This is called the uh, riemann roch line. Okay? If the degree is g minus 1, then in general uh, the riemann roch formula gives you 0. If the g is g minus g, 2g minus 2, uh, the riemann roch formula gives you g minus 1. Right? So this in, in case is h0 minus h1. So h0 is greater or equal to this. So we know already that h always uh, the line bundles here are always in this uh, region. On the other hand, we have the Clifford line. And this uh, starts here. The Clifford line starts here and goes here. So this goes from 1 to here. Because this Clifford line is k equal to d over 2 plus 1. Clifford's theorem said the projective dimension, which was k minus 1, is less or equal to d over 2. But here we have the vector space dimension. So this is less or equal to, Clifford's theorem says that k, which is h0 of e, is less or equal to d over 2 plus 1. Right. So and the Clifford line is just this line where the maximum is possible. So we know that in this range, the other ranges are not, not important because then by riemann roch you get everything. So only this range is important. Right? So we know uh, that uh, in this case, uh, we, uh, every line bundle sits somewhere here, has h0 somewhere here, a certain degree. Okay? And then we're also, moreover, we have the uh, Brunner, and this is actually not a line, it's a hyperbola. It looks something like this. This is uh, the Brunner hyperbola. So we know that so beta equal to zero, beta equal to zero, right? And one then one knows that uh, uh, for a general line bundle, uh, there are line bundles in this range here. For a general line bundle, we know that uh, uh, h0 is lesser equal to, uh, well, you know exactly by the, I mean, this Brunner number has to be positive, and this means we are in this range, if you look at this Brunner number again, right? It's not here, it's, not here, it's here. Right? Okay? And, uh, yeah, this is the situation for line bundles, right? You have uh, line bundles in this range. Right? Right? We know somehow where you can find H0, or what values H0 can take. <coughs> okay? And what do we do? Well, moreover, I should say there is, of course, ser duality, so you, don't, you have only to know one side of this range here by ser duality, but that's okay. Sometimes we, we, we keep it like that. Sometimes this range is more convenient for vector bundles than sometimes this. What do you do for vector bundles now? For vector bundles, you do the following. Replace. Now we have, for vector bundles, you have three variables, k, d, and rank, right? So replace d and k by the slope mu d over k and lambda equal to k over n. Then if you look at the Riemann-Roch formula, <coughs> Riemann-Roch formula, the line stays the same. So if you replace d here by 
by nu and k by lambda. Sorry? Nu is d over n. Sorry, d over n, yes, yes. That's of course important. Slope d over n, yes. Right. So we have the same, more or less the same picture here. So the Riemann Roch, by Riemann Roch formula, which I uh, gave before, this is again the Riemann Roch line. And later I will explain Clifford's theorem. Then the uh, this line stays the same. But the Brunner number is a little bit uh, below this because we have a different dimension of the moduli space. And now for Brunner is a little bit below, like this, something like this. So Brunner number now is is like this, right? Okay. And one would like to know well where are again vector bundles with these uh, with these what is the Bernoulli local loci so locus if you are a point here or a point here right and i mean optimal would be optimal would be <coughs> you have here if you wish those two lines and the Bernoulli optimal would be somewhat some <coughs> curve here right such that you know that yet you have always uh, vector bundles in this range right so greater or equal to or lesser or equal to here, right? Of course, this depends on the curve. <coughs> and these curves here are up to uh, um, unknown at all at the moment. It's not even known whether this, this could be, for example, also it's not clear that this is a partly continuous or something, you know, could be some, some strange curve, right? It's not known even that it is sort of exists at all because you have uh, all ranks here and so it's very complicated. Okay. <coughs> but this is the aim to explain here. So the problem, let me write down, problem, work out the region for which P and k is non empty right as we had in the case of line bundles right so let me go on with some results so section 3 some results <coughs> and i will f mainly uh, stress on results with which contradict uh, all those uh, statements for line bundles right uh, first result, there is a complete result, exists a complete result only for mu lesser equal to 1. This was given by Rambilla, Pass, uh, Gregorchen and Newstead. And then for mu between 1 and 2, I think less than 2 by uh, Merka. And the result is the following, it's the following theorem. Write it down here. So this was proved by Brambilla, Pascal, Gorczek and Newstead in, in 79 and by uh, Merka in this range in 99. So uh, suppose mu is less than 2 and n greater or equal to 2. Then we have the following. B n d k is non-empty if and only if d is positive and k is less or equal to n plus 1 over g times g minus n. And then an exception here, n d k is different from d d d. Okay, and moreover, moreover, they show that if B N D D K is non-empty, then it is irreducible of dimension Renuta number N D K and the singularities. 
B and D K are exactly B and D K plus one. Okay? So this is exactly what one would like to have. When you have a precise statement, where are the vector bundles, the semi-stable, stable vector bundles here? Well, I, mean, I only consider the stable. They have also a theorem about the semi-stable, but I omit this, right? Only stable case here. The stable bundles in which range do they exist? This is for every curve, right? For every curve. And then there is a surprise here, first surprise. So let me write it down. So there's a new line here. This didn't occur before. If I make an equal here, there's a new line. So this is called the delta line. I don't know why, but anyway. Lambda, well, if I divide this, so I make an equality here and divide k over n by, this is lambda, then this is 1, equal to 1 plus, and then you get here 1 over g. G, no, that is some mistake. Uh, let me see. G minus A. And D minus A. Here's a mistake, sorry. There was no D here in this case. It was just a misprint. You divide D by N, you get this K, uh, you get uh, mu minus 1. Right? And now if we look at the, our picture here, uh, mu and k and uh, lambda, we have here somewhere beta equal to zero, somewhere, and somewhere the Riemann-Roch line. Then the surprise is this line lies here, right? This is a delta line. So the theorem in, in this uh, statement here just says that if this here is uh, sort of true, somewhere here, right? because this was g minus 1, so this is 2 maybe, then in this range we know exactly where are vector bundles with the corresponding, uh, the corresponding h0, okay, stable vector bundles, yes? Here we know exactly. But the surprise is that this lies below the Bernoulli uh, hyperbola, right? So between this, of course, there are rational numbers. Right? There are rational numbers in here, which means that uh, there are numbers uh, uh, mu comma lambda, and if I multiply by the rank, then there are, uh, so this implies that one is wrong. One is wrong. So this implies one is wrong. Why? Because exists n d k, right? Mu and lambda were just uh, were just d divided by n and k divided by n. So rational numbers means there is there exist integers such that the corresponding rational numbers are between these lines, right? So such that such that beta of n d k is positive. Right. Re remember that uh, the positive where we be uh, this is this comes out from the hyperbola. If you look at uh, the, which I didn't maybe explain enough, the, 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 the positive beta positive means here, beta negative is here. So with beta positive, right? But B N D K is empty, right? because you have points in between here, right? So this contradicts one, because here in, in the line one case, if beta n d k is greater or equal to zero, you have always non-emptiness here. But this uh, range, of course, is, sli is, is very small, so to speak, so this means that uh, you have to go to a high rank again, right? So rank 2 or so, you won't succeed to find something, but I mean for higher rank, yes. Because here you have rational numbers and they may have a low, big denominator. Right. Okay, this is the first surprise. Now, maybe I should say a few words to the proof 
the proof of this uses so-called BGN, BGN because of the uh, three authors, extensions. So this, what is a BGN extension, maybe I should say this. So the proof uses BGN extensions, these are extensions of this type. We have uh, given by, well, extensions are given by x1 of this and this, which is h1 dual of this, tensor this. But this is a direct sum of line bundles, so it's given by, by, uh, given by e1 up to ek, corresponding to these factors here, with, well, in x, or h1 if you wish, x1, I write f o x, corresponding to these factors here, uh, with the following properties, h0 of f star is 0, right? And secondly, they are linearly independent in this vector space. e1 up to ek, linearly independent. And then they show, well, if you take these here, then these vector bundles here, these extensions are stable, right? And any bundle of this type, uh, yeah, and, and, and you get a component of the right dimension by this, by just varying the f and the, 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 the elements here. You, you get a component of the right dimension, and moreover, you show that there is, can be only one uh, component, right? So you don't assume the stability of f? Pardon? You don't assume the stability of f? Here. No. So no. Maybe unstable. Maybe unstable. Yeah could be, well, but in general it's not so unstable because otherwise you wouldn't get something stable. Right, okay. Uh, then this, uh, this was, we, 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 we get a contradiction to this here, right? So the next one, let's look at this here. For a general curve, if the Bernoulli number is negative, is then this is uh, the, the Bernoulli uh, locus uh, empty. So this is also not the case. This was shown by Clairvoisin. So follow the theorem by Voisin, already in 92. Her aim was not Renata theory, but uh, I mean she was interested in curve theory and okay. So uh, you take X on a general KC curve on a general K3 surface. General case D three surface means that the Picard lattice is, has rank one, so the, it's generated by one element. And then one knows this is a Petri curve. This is sh was shown by Lazarsfeld. Right, so X is Petri. Right. Then she showed that B two two G minus two K is non-empty if K is less than or equal to G over 2 plus 2. So then she constructed vector bundles in this range. Okay? Uh, yeah, well, uh, now we choose, let's see, I don't need this anymore. choose K, uh, G equal to 2K1 and K equal to K1 plus 2. Choose a number K1 greater or equal to 2 or I mean of this type here so that you have in fact this, this range here, right? G over 2, this is the uh, greatest integer, uh, biggest integer, small or equal to. Okay, so we have B, 2, 2G minus 2, K is different from 0. It's non empty. Okay? But what is Bernoulli number? B, 2, 2G minus 2, K. This was rank squared. Now here we have rank 2, so this is what dimension of the modular space is this, okay, because the rank is 2. And then we have minus K, if you look at this number. K minus degree, and degree is 2G minus 2, 
and then plus 2 times uh, g minus 1. Okay? Then you see this cancels. Okay, and we get we get 4. Uh, 4, let's see, 8k1. G is 2k1. So 8k1 minus 4 plus 1. This one here, and here we have k1 squared, and k uh, sorry k squared, and k is k1 plus 2, so we get k1 plus 1 squared. Okay, and then you multiply this out, and you get minus k1 squared plus 4k1 minus 7. Uh, minus yeah, sorry yeah, minus k1 squared plus 4k1 minus 7 and this goes to minus infinity if k1 goes to infinity right so you get uh, you get cases in which the uh, Brunetta number is very negative or even goes to minus infinity right and the Brunetta locus is non-empty even it goes to minus infinity Right? So this is completely wrong here for higher rank. Right? Because we have here, we, we, you can find a general curve for which this is valid here. These curves are Petri curves, so general sense of Brunetta. So this is wrong. This means 3 is wrong. 3, wrong. Wrong meaning for higher rank. I mean, not, not that statement. Okay? What about 5? Next is 5. So I don't need this anymore. Okay, yeah, no. <coughs> so there's a theorem by Moser Tachidor. In, uh, this was 2004, which says the following: If X is Petri, Petri curve of genus G greater equal to two, then if K1 squared plus K1 plus one is lesser equal to G, is less less than two K1 squared plus K1. So in particular, there are integers like this. Then uh, b two two g minus two. So rank is again two. The degree is two g minus two, and here two k one plus one. So here we have not the uh, even k, but the odd k. The even k was was the theorem. Of. Then this is uh, reusable. Uh, and, moreover, exists a component <coughs> of dimension larger than expected. I write. One can write uh, down expect, uh, explicitly larger than expected. Expect, the expected dimension is always a Brunetta number. Larger than expected. So 5 is wrong. Right. The X is Petri, and uh, yeah, did I say, yeah, actually this I did not, well, one has to compute here that this Brunetta number is positive, okay, which it is, I, I don't do this now, okay, we have to verify that this is, uh, then this, uh, for line bundles it's irreducible, but for vector bundle it's not irreducible, and that exists even a component of dimension larger than expected, right, so five is wrong, when the proof, well, five, Wrong. The proof you, uh, uses degeneration methods. So, I mean, there is this degeneration of linear systems by Eisenbach and Harris. She generalized this to uh, vector bundles, right? And uses degenerations to, I don't know, in this case, I don't remember, in general, to with elliptic tails, which is more convenient. So, uh, proof. 
by degeneration. And actually, she generalizes the notion of limit linear series. Okay. Then another theorem, I will all, there's also a contradiction to this one here. Another theorem by Taichi Dor. So this is in one year later, <coughs> or five. <coughs> Again, X is Petri of genus G greater or equal to two, and I can erase this, I hope. And now if the theorem is if G plus two is lesser equal to D is lesser equal to two G minus one, then B two D two is non-empty, reduced, and irreducible of dimension beta 2g2 equal to 2d minus 3. I mean, you work out that this is 2d minus 3. Here's a Brunetta number. But the singularities are not anymore correct. So, but singular of b 2d2 is equal. I mean, this is always in the singular locus here, same way, but there is another component. <coughs> That's another component where f is where dimension f is uh, actually 2d minus 6. And then you work out what is the Brunetta number here, and this is smaller. So the singularities are of bigger dimension. So let me write down b 2d3. This is the dimension of this one here, the expected dimension of this one, which is actually actually 3d minus 2g minus 6, and this is actually less than 2d minus 6. Right. So you get that the singular locus is not even not only reduced, uh, not only reducible, but also of bigger dimension than expected. Okay, so what we get for is wrong. What about two? So now we have contradiction, uh, contradictory examples to one, three, four, and five. What about two? Well, I said already this was Fulton Lazarsfeld's connectedness theorem. And that is unknown for vector bundles. I'm not sure. I mean, in, in fact, the proof for Fulton and Lazarsfeld doesn't work. But I'm not sure whether uh, anybody could try to prove it so far. But <laughs> Uh, it could be that it's not too difficult. I don't know. S for two, maybe write me down. No counter example seems to be known. I have to write seems to be known because, of course, I don't know everything. So maybe somewhere there isn't counter example, but I, I don't know of it. Seems to be known. Proof the proof of two. Works only for rank one, only for line bundles. For n equal one, for line bundles. So the connectivity is unknown for higher rank. Right, so I cannot say everything is wrong here, but this is unknown, the other things are wrong. And I have to come to six. <coughs> right, so finally I come to six. What is the analog of a linear system? And that's actually a coherent system. It's called coherent system. I'll say something to the notion in a minute, but let me first de define it. It's just, I mean, you, it's just the analog of a linear system, right? A coherent system of type 
NDK on X is a pair EB where E is a vector bundle of rank N and degree D and V is a subvector space of dimension K of H0 of E. So actually, for, but again we consider here a sub-vector space and not the corresponding projective space. If you would consider the pro corresponding projective space, this would just be a linear system. Right. This is what a linear system is. Non, not necessarily a complete linear system, but a linear system. Right. So, so for n equal 1, we have that a coherent system is more or less, I mean, up, uh, up to the fact that we consider the vector space is more or less a linear system. A coherent system, actually the projective wise coherent system is a linear system, but so I write is more or less a linear system. <coughs> so actually, I mean, the notion coherent system is not very, uh, not very really chosen. Right? But this is due to Le Potier, and I mean, everybody knows, uh, uses it now. Maybe one should call it a rank n linear system or something like that. I mean, because it's again a sub vector space, so something linear. But it's called now coherent system. Was, uh, this was introduced by uh, Le Potier for uh, coherent sheaths on P2. And there, of course, it makes a difference. But the main, main results are for curves. One can, of course, also define coherent system for arbitrary varieties but it does not uh, yet apart from p2 is not very it's not yet uh, much studied okay so recall that this g d and k minus 1 x was the blow up of this along the singular locus the space of coherent systems of course cannot be uh, already this cannot, for n equal greater equal to 2, this cannot be true already by the theorem of, uh, of Tekshidor. Because we had already uh, something in the singular locus, right, where the dimension uh, of, of the, the, the subvector space is, not be, uh, is, equal, uh, is equal to k and not bigger, right? So already there, it cannot be true already by the theorem of uh, generalization, direct generalization cannot be true for coherent systems. But there is another problem. Exists another problem. Which I would like to explain. Now one has to uh, construct the moduli space of stable coherent systems. Right here we had the moduli, this was just, you know, this was just the Jacobian here. And here we have the moduli, the moduli space of stable vector bundles, then one has to construct also moduli spaces of stable vector bundles. But uh, uh, general, uh, geometric invariant theory tells us that, that uh, this depends on a real parameter, if you work this out, right? So first of all, I, have to, I would like to explain when, when a coherent system is stable. So a coherent uh, subsystem of EB is a pair F comma W such that F is contained in E is a subbundle and second W is a subvector space not only of H0 of F but also of B. Right? And with this one can say when is a coherent system stable and semi-stable. <coughs> Definition. E B is stable, respectively semi-stable. I write it out, okay, semi-stable. Again, similar. 
inequality for all coherent subsystem f w we have the following degree f actually i would should say proper coherent subsystem for stability but it is not so important maybe degree f rank f this was the slope which turned up also for vector bundles but then here alpha uh, and actually it's called alpha state said it depends on an, on a real number alpha right it's called alpha stable and now here also the dimension of v w sorry divided by the rank of f is less than degree e divided by rank e plus alpha now dimension of uh, v divided by the rank of e okay this is for stability and for semi-stability just less or equal to the same way right so you see this comes automatically if you uh, how does uh, geometric invariant theory work you construct a space which contains all these objects such that the moduli space is a quotient by some glm and then you can say when is a point in this space stable or not by this uh, mumford hilbert criterion right you work it out and you see that this comes in there are two parameters. It's one parameter. <coughs> okay. Yeah. So this is the notion of alpha stable or alpha semi-stable coherent system. And now the point is, which I would like to make, that one can construct now. This is the modular space of alpha stable coherent systems of this type. Depends on alpha, on the rank, on the degree, and this k. Okay. And then, of course, you, you, you can make, consider the map into B and D, K, into the Brunner locus. Oh, I, I wrote here, should I try to change the notation? It was B and D, K, okay? I just, if you have a coherent system here, E, V, you associate to this E, right? But the point is, this is not really a map, it's only a rational map. Because, because, there may be alpha stable coherent systems such as the vector, bund vector bundle is not stable. Right. There are examples of this. In particular, there is a modular space of genus zero, and of course there are no stable bundles of genus zero, which is quite interesting. Right? So this is first of all, this is only a rational map, so one doesn't have such something like this as here. That this is a blow up. It's even more complicated. Nevertheless, well, however, if alpha is small, all right, one can show that necessarily alpha is always positive. Otherwise, there are no alpha stable systems. And for small alpha, in fact, one can show that there is a map. But nevertheless, it's complicated, right? The, 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 but the relation between these coherent systems and Bernoulli theory is important, of course. But it's more complicated in the line model than in the line model case. So this what, what, was what I wanted to say to classical Renauter theory. And if you wish, I, I still have 10 minutes. I could give you, explain the, explain the uh, uh, Petri map. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, this is not so easy. And maybe for graduate students, it's, it's an important thing. And not so easy, actually. But uh, I don't know, after four hours of talks, should I do this or should I do this not? I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but uh, okay, but you know, this is uh, this is actually for graduate students a point which uh, is difficult, <laughs> but one should you uh, understand it, <laughs> right? One should understand it once at least, and then you may uh, forget about it. <laughs> okay, I'll do this. So is, the, uh, is the rational map dominant? Or Sorry? Is the rational map to the Brunetta locus that Dominant, yes. Okay. If a vector bundle is stable, then uh, there are coherent systems. Yeah, that's dominant. Even subjective, I say. So, yeah, the claim is first, T, E is a vector bundle. This is a tangent space. 
first of all, I have to explain the tangent space to the moduli space. Okay? And the claim is this is H1 of x e star tensor e, where this is a dual bundle, hom of e into ox. And this is, if you tensor this with e, hom of e into ox is the same as and e, the vector bundle f endomorphism. So this is H1 of x and e. So this as vector bundle. Okay? So, proof. What's a tangent vector to MND at E? I assume again that, the, that there is a Poincare bundle because that's easier, right? We have a Poincare bundle. I, I don't write it here. So this is a map from spec. Uh, I'm over C here, so this doesn't matter, and this is a dual number, modulo E squared, epsilon squared, right? To M N D. Right? Such that with, I mean this here is a point with a tangent direction, okay? A map from this maps just to a tangent, uh, well, such that with the closed point goes to an E. With closed point. So this has a closed point, uh, the, the only point of this, uh, right? And, and the tangent direction goes to E. Okay? So what is this? Well, if we assume that the rank and degree are co-prime, then we have a, we have a Poincaré bundle, right? So by the universal property of the Poincaré bundle, so this is the same, so this is the same as giving a vector bundle P E epsilon P epsilon I write P epsilon because it comes from the Poincare bundle on X epsilon which is by definition just X cross spec these dual numbers <coughs> like this okay the Poincare bundle was a bundle on X cross M and if you have a map we can restrict this here okay this is just given by by this one here. Extending E, of course. Extending E. The bundle E, which we fix here. Okay? So, uh, yeah, this extends to E, so this fits into, so P E, P epsilon, fits into an exact sequence. So this is P epsilon, and here's another E. This looks as if this, this is a rank n vector bundle, this is a rank n vector bundle, so this looks at this, as if this is a rank n 2n vector bundle, but it isn't, because this is a vector bundle on the closed point, this is a vector bundle on epsilon times uh, this, so on the, the tangent direction, right? So these are on different spaces, and this is a vector bundle. This is not a vector bundle, and this is not a vector bundle on, I mean, on, the, on this space here, right? But this is, fits into this exact sequence, okay? The class of this extension is actually the element here. So this is just extensions of E by E, right? You can consider it as this. And how does it look? No, no I don't write. The, the class of this uh, extension is the corresponding element here. I don't write this, okay? Uh, now we have to even give an explicit description of this because we want to uh, so explicit description of P epsilon suppose phi bar is H in H1 of X and E represents the exact sequence star Right? Then choose an open covering, X, U, I, open covering, trivializing E. Right? So E restricted on to U, I is trivial, and uh, the uh, vector bundle is then given by matrices. Okay? And let, as usual, 
uij equal to ui intersect uj, right? Then represent phi bar by a co-boundary by phi ij in h0 of u uh, ij e star tensor e. I have to explain this, i.e. <coughs> if E U I cross epsilon E U I is a trivial bundle here, right? Just on the closed point it's this and on the other point it's this and then just a direct sum. Trivial extension of E to U I cross spec while well, this I mean and maybe I should give a name to this C of epsilon or epsilon square, right? Then gluings on U I, U I J are given by are given by matrices. Identity here, right? This corresponds to here. Identity here, identity here, but phi ij here. Right. Zero identity and here phi ij. Right? This gives you this extension here. Right? Where this is the, the first identity, this is the second identity. Okay. This gives us PE. So this gives P epsilon. Okay? Now we can, uh, now we look, have to look at sections. Assume, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe another five minutes. I, I don't know, maybe if you're tired, I stop here then. I don't know. I'm not sure. I guess we are tired and then it doesn't make any sense. So this is already, I explained this. And no, but not yet the, uh, okay. yeah, I guess, after four hours, of okay, course. Maybe we, can, we can print your email in part. <laughs> <laughs> huh? We can print your email in part of your notes. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I mean, yeah. I was a bit too ambitious when you were doing this. <laughs> it was too long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. But one can easily explain now, you know, by these matrices how this okay. Petri map comes in. Mm -hmm. yeah. We will print you your notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we will send you. Thanks so much. <laughs>